But remember, what is with Allah is immense reward that is great for you if you pass those tests. So, this is a challenge for all of us. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continued further that Fattakullah must have taught him. They fear Allah as much as you can. So, be patient, listen, and spend, sacrifice everything good, put it forward for Allah. And remember that that those who are saved from the covetousness of their own soul, Okay, those who can who can bottle their own emotions, who can step on their lost true desires, Allah said they are the only ones that will achieve for this. That means succeeding hands on you being able to step on your own selfish desires, to be able to crush your own lust. And in two way the law called on Hasana, the Dari Ulakum Wayaptu Lakum. If you give to Allah a beautiful load, if you make sacrifice and you understand and you try your best for the sake of Allah, Allah said, Wallahu shakuru nali. Allah is very appreciative and Allah is forbearing and is adi mulubayu wa shahadat in azizul hakim. Allah is the knower of the, um, of the seen and the unseen and is the almighty. Allah is the all powerful. So, brothers and sisters in Islam, we will always face challenges no matter who we are. And no matter what we do, we will always face challenges. But if we do our best and we believe in Allah and we are ready to sacrifice, then we will find things easier for us here in the world and Allah will reward us immensely on the day of judgment. Now coming to specific issues. So all along we'll be talking about broad-based concepts. Now we are going to go into a little more detail. Now this is a conversation of adults. So if any one of you is going to feel offended when we talk about some key issues, um, I understand there are exit signs there for us to leave. So that is understandable. However, we have to also understand these are four parts of our is of our religion. And in our religion, La Hayat is deen. There is no shyness in the matter of religion. Because if you don't know and you are wrong, Allah is going to ask you why you didn't go to learn. Okay, so this is really important. Now, first question we often ask ourselves is, when it comes to intimate relationship, in other words, as we say here, when it comes to issue of sex, is it a responsibility or your right? The answer is, it is both. If you are the one that your spouse is asking you for it, it is your responsibility. If you are the one asking for it, it is your right. And I'll say that again. When it comes to issues of intimate relationship, it is both responsibility and it's also your right. If you are the one asking for it, it is your right. And if your spouse is asking for it, it is your responsibility. So there is no true way about it. And that's why in the earlier principle, we made it clear to ourselves that if you strip everything away from marriage, that somebody can, you can outsource it. You know we outsource everything, right? You can't outsource intimate relationship with your wife to somebody else. Okay, so now, then the second question on this is, what then constitutes adequate frequency? Now, it depends on the couple. There are some couple Oh, if it is, if it is, if we are trying to get the kids out because of what I'm saying, no, let them sit down. No, I'm not going to be vulgar. Uh, no, not at all. I'm not going to tell them what they already probably haven't had before. <laughs> it's, it's us as adults that we assume that our kids don't know anything. Okay? Think about yourself when you were 19 or 20 years old and your parents think you don't even know the difference between a man and a woman. 
and you know how wrong they were, right? And some of us too, we are doing the same thing. But these days, you give your child, you give him a droid phone when he's like eight years old, ask them. I was, I was in Houston a few, a few, maybe a couple of weeks ago, and they asked me to talk to the youth. And the question I asked them to break the ice, I said, by a show of hands, because I don't want to ask them if they are watching porn. Of course, you know, children in every community, they are watching pornography on their cell phones, right? If you don't know, you are still burying your head in sand. If you say you don't know. If your child has a droid phone or iPhone, believe it, a whole lot of them are watching porn on their phone. So what I did was to ask them. I said, even if you have never watched porn yourself, raise up your hand if you know somebody who has watched porn. You see them raise their hands. You see, it's, it's, a, it's a simple question. It's a simple question. Because it's, even if you have not watched it before, if you know somebody who has watched porn before, raise up your hands. You see, so don't assume. Don't assume. We have to engage our youth. And the best people to engage them, us, as their parents. Talk to your children. And how will you know what your children know? Ask them where they just come from. It's simple. Simple test. If you ask your child where the babies come from, and don't ask, don't think you have to ask those who are in high school. No, you are late. Ask those who anybody who is over the age of six. Just ask simple questions, casual conversation. Where do babies come from? If they give you the right answer, you are late. <laughs> you are all laughing. This is very serious. For those of you who have kids who are over six years of age, when you go home tonight, ask them that question. Ask. If the question comes to you, they will answer. Just ask them casually that, oh, I'm alive. But let me even ask you this question. Where do babies come from? And listen to the answer they will give you. Yeah, and it will be a good eye opener for many of us that are chuckling now. It will be a good eye opener for you. You'll be amazed how much they already know. Anyway, intimate relationship. When it comes to the expectation, you are responsible for your partner's enjoyment and satisfaction. It is a duty. It is not something that is well if I can't get to it. No, it is a duty. And one has to understand that sometimes challenges that occur in this arena is due to medical problems. A lot of time when there is problem in the family, like they don't have children, people in the African, you know, and not even African, almost everywhere, they always blame the women. Always. Meanwhile, it could be the man that is firing blanks. Okay? But yet, we still blame women for everything. Sometimes the lack of performance of premature ejaculation and all those stuff, they are truly medical problems. So if you have problems in this department, please seek medical help. Don't assume it's juju. Okay? Don't call it jedi jedi. Jedi jedi has no definition, even in Yoruba language. Because anything is jedi jedi. Anything from passing blood in stool, which may be cancer, uh, from having back pain, from impotence, everything is dedicated. So, this is not right. Because your wife has right over you. If you need to be on the blue pill, by all means, you need to be on the blue pill. If you die while taking the blue pill, hey, you die in active theory. <laughs> so, well, you don't think it's active duty. <laughs> but the whole point is, seek medical help. Seek medical help. This is a department that you have to safeguard. We have to safeguard this. Adequate and honest communication is the key to success. Because, by a show of hands, how many of us actually got the sex talk from your own parents? Raise up your hand. That your parents are the ones who called you and they told you about the opposite sex and all that and what you should do. You see, we only have two people. In all of us, only two people that got the sex up from their parents. So, what about the rest of us? They assume you are going to learn it on your own. And for every man, every man thing 
gift is God's gift to every woman. And even the one that is performing below average is going to think of himself as a millimeter. Because he has no idea what's going on. So, brothers and sisters in Islam, this is really important. This is a very important issue. Before you get married, sit down with a counselor. It could be your imam. Sit down, let them explain. I mean, it's disastrous when people are getting married and then on casual conversation, during the nikah ceremony, you ask him, so what do people say when they want to meet their wife? And he has no idea. He doesn't know. And they are, they are doing their nikah right there. So what are they going to do as soon as everybody leaves? They don't even know the dua. So this is, this is terrible, to say the least. It's terrible. Okay, so it's important to seek information. This is, this is not, this is part of what you have to know. And I, I challenge all of us, those of us who conduct marriages and stuff like that, meet with the couple before the day of the Nikai. Meet with them, assess what they need to know, talk to them. Ensure that they already know what they're supposed to. Sometimes you even get to the Nikai, they've not even said to the Ito of Mark. Right there is when you are explaining it to them, and then you have to excuse them to go and send to it. I mean, there are some things that should not happen. It only shows how much we don't put particular attention to important issues. Brothers and sisters, this is really important, and we should stay within the boundaries of our law. Again, on the issue of intimate relationship, this is the most political way of putting this statement. Wise women understand that they do not have the right to say no to their husbands. I'm not sure there's a milder way I can put this. Because this is the absolute mildest way I could think of of putting this statement. Wise women know that they do not have the right to say no to their husband. Saying no is a no-no. And it's really important for our sisters to know if you say no to your husband, you have said yes to so many things you have not even thought about. And if you say no to your husband and he's calm, you should be very worried. You should be incredibly worried if you say no to your husband and he's quiet or he's calm. It's not because he's nice. No. It's because, number one, he's saying to himself, why, what did I do to deserve this from her? How am I going to get back at her? What are the options I have to her? When should I strike back? There is not going to be anything pleasant going on in his head at the time you said no to him, except what is going to retaliate back. It is never pretty when you say no to your husband and he's quiet. If you say no to him and he's up in arms, he's fighting. You are lucky. And the reason why you are lucky is because he's still thinking that you are the only option he has. The day he, he realizes and he convinces himself that you are just occupying one out of the four spaces he has, but then you understand how much trouble you are in. Because that, that will eventually happen. It will eventually happen. Because after you said no, and he realizes he needs to safeguard his own religion. His secretary comes to work every day with a skirt that is above the knee. Okay? His secretary comes to work every day, and the secretary is not married. And he knows that. Okay? And there are so many co workers that smile at him and tell him how nice his perfume smells. Yes, and he keeps coming home to you, and you are busy saying no to your husband, claiming we are in America now, I can say no, which is true. But once you say no, after a while, you start thinking about options that he has. And by the time he becomes quiet, it's game over. Because the problem that will occur from it, you will not be able to return this sword back to this cabin. So if you are one of those people that say to yourself, well, it's my body, it's true, it's your body. If you say you are the gatekeeper, and of course you are the gatekeeper, but remember, when somebody brings business to you and you say go away, they have the right to take their business elsewhere. You see your husband are saying, yeah? 
The truth, the truth, the truth is, men don't like to say this. Okay, they don't like to say this, and women will assume that you're supposed to understand it now. After all, we did it last night, and you can wait for me to get back from work tomorrow at night. There is no such thing. The guy's mind does not work like that. It doesn't work. Do not assume that the way you feel about sex is the way your husband feels about sex. It's not the same. And if you want to understand that it is not the same, think about how long it takes you to warm up and how many seconds it takes your husband to be ready. Okay? Your husband can be ready as soon as he looks at you. It takes only one second. But for you, you still need a lot of foreplay and all those things, which the average man thinks is nothing but a waste of time. <laughs> and in their heads, in their heads, they are convinced it's a waste of time. But the human physiology dictates that it is not a waste of time. If anything, the professor Lola was Tom said, you should always give your wife that adequate time. Okay, so if we don't know our religion, we are the ones that don't know our religion. It is part of our religion to have adequate time for foreplay with your wives. It is part of the religion. But you see, in the way the man is wired, he's ready. It's like a microwave. The woman is like open. You put it on and then you wait. Put it on and put it Before you can make anything. We are very different. And our last one of Atala made it so. Our last one of Atala made it so. Our last one of Atala huh? made it like that. Allah made it like that. Did it ever occur to you that the nipple that the baby sucks on is also very sensitive sexually to the woman? How do they cope with both? If they can be turned on just like that. See, you have to think, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala designed us. And Allah said, you will not find error in the design of Allah. Okay, it's right to note, mean that far out, right? For jail, basura, I'll tell you if you do. That look again, can you see? You won't find error in what Allah has designed. Even if you don't understand it, you are the one that don't understand it. But Allah did not make any mistake. So, do not assume, and this is really important for us to spend some time on this topic, even though it makes our sisters uncomfortable, and it makes many of them hate me. But the fact is, I'm your friend, because this is what your husband is trying to tell you. But he doesn't know how to put it in words. Okay? Do not, do not put your marriage at a disadvantage and jeopardy by saying no to your husband. In fact, there are many men that think women call themselves and they have a secret meeting that tells them to have headache anytime their husband is calling them. Because it's like it's a universal thing. When you call her, she has headache. It's always headache, they always have. As like the man is the source of their headache. But remember, everybody can help you with everything except this. This is your primary responsibility, both for the husband and to the wife. And again, like I said earlier, if your partner wants it, it's your responsibility. If you want it, it is your right. Now, this video, I totally encourage all our women to go and watch this video. All you have to do is go to YouTube, type Women Are Not In Islam, and you see this sister, she will give you about 11 minute lecture on this important topic. Just listen to it, when you get home, don't be fooled by the title that says Women Are Not In Islam. Just go and watch this video. Women, it says Women Are Not In Islam, that's the title. Watch this video, watch it with your wife. Okay, watch it with your wife. And for ladies, watch this with your daughters. This is really important, you will enjoy the video. I don't want to tell you what she said, because I want you to go and watch the video. Again, about intimate relationships. We have to recognize that abortion is a haram. Yes, we are in the United States where they tell us it's pro-life and pro-choice and pro- 
in Islam, you don't have the right to kill anybody. You don't have the right, except something that is ordained by Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned to us that on the day of judgment, that those children who were murdered will ask, why, what offense did they commit that justified them being murdered by their parents? So, abortion is around. When it comes to the issue of birth control, there are some brothers that don't believe in birth control. And at the same time, when it comes to Now, it does not mean that you should do back control. I'm not advocating that you should do back control if you don't want to. If you want to have 200 children, that's okay. And I have to be I used to tell myself I want to have 200 kids. That tells me I have a long way to go. But that's good. So the issue is you can have as many children as you want. Allah will take care of them. Do not commit abortion on account of you being afraid of poverty. Wala attack to do Allah that way. Okay. In Surah to Isra, that do not kill your children for fear of poverty. Allah will provide for them as Allah is providing for you. But in killing your children is a very great sin. We pray to Almighty Allah to forgive us and show commit. Plan A in this case will be you doing bad control methods. There are natural ways of doing birth control that doesn't even involve you using anything. Okay? Maybe the failure rate is high, but that's okay. At least you are doing something. Okay? You can do other methods, barrier methods, and so on and so forth. It's not the focus of this lecture, but it's something you can think about and consult the scholars if this is something you want to, uh, you have issues with. Plan B is actually a pill, it's level not just real. It's kind of expensive because it costs about $35 per pill. And it works for about 48 hours. So, I guess it's not a bad thing. Because plan C is plan children. <laughs> and in nine months, you get a bouncy baby girl or baby boy. Have the life. So, whichever option you choose, they are all great. But abortion is what is haram. Now, in terms of finances, Allah has one of Allah mentioned who has the financial obligation in the house. When he said, Arijal Kokwamuna Allah Nisai. Silence, please. Arijal Kokwamuna Allah Nisai, Imam Fajol Allah Ubar of Malabar. Wa Imam Amfaku Min Amwali. So that Allah Allah did. That men are the protectors and maintainers of women because Allah has given them more resources than the others and they support them from their meat. Now, Allah continues further that therefore righteous women should be devoutly obedient, that is they should listen to their husband, they should obey their husband, and they should guide in their, their, uh, in their husband's absence what Allah will have them guide. And Allah continues that and those who you have disloyalty or ill conduct among them, admonish them, refuse to share their bed, and of course, touch them lightly, but if, return, if they return to obedience, they seek uh, against them not any means of annoyance, for Allah is high above all, all of us. Now, this ayah is the ayah that I established who has the financial responsibilities in the house. As a man, in case you can't see me from where you are sitting, this is something men generally don't like. Why? Because you can be married to a wife who is even richer than you, who makes more money than you. But guess what? Who has the financial responsibility is the man. What is the percentage? 100 to zero. <laughs> Let me say that again. What is the financial responsibility ratio in the house is 100 to zero. Meaning the husband is 100 responsible and the wife is zero responsible for the finances in the home. Let me make that clear again. When it comes to paying mortgage, as it will be like, when it comes to paying mortgage, the husband pays 100% and the wife pays zero. When it comes to paying the electricity bill, 
The husband pay 100 percent and the wife pays zero. When it comes to buying food to the house, the husband pays 100 percent and the wife pays zero. Now, like I said earlier, this is something most men don't like. But we have to ask ourselves, why is this the case? The responsibility, the economic responsibility in the house falls squarely on the man. Because the wife has her own responsibilities. We are talking about the primary responsibility. That does not mean the wife cannot help the husband. Remember I said the word help. I'm not saying it is his right. It's a help. So when the husband, if two women came to the Prophet Wasallam. And one of them asked that her husband is a very nice man, but he's a man with small needs. And she has some resources. Can she give her resources to her husband? What does that tell us? That's the standard. She's not obliged to give anything to him. But she came to even ask this as a question before she even does it, so that she will know that it is her life for her to do. So it's not for a man to now sit down with the wife and say, well, this is the mortgage. Where's your own 50%? It's not part of it. Okay? The Prophet Islam then the man told her that if a woman gives her husband or contributes in this manner, she will get double reward. Double reward. She will get the reward of charity and then she will get the reward of helping a family member. Because her husband is a family member. So she's going to get the reward of helping a family member. And then she will get the reward of charity. Because what she has done is not obligated on her. Now, does this apply to women who make more, uh, over $100,000 a year? Yes! Even if your wife is a millionaire and you make $50,000 a year, it is still your responsibility to take care of your family. Why is this important? Because when, the, when problems start occurring in the house, it is because we all fail in our primary responsibilities. Now, for a woman that will now tell the husband that it is 100% your, you know, your issue to take care of the house, remember, your husband is also obligated to stay within his means. So if you, as the wife, because this is the problem that happened many years ago, a couple of years ago, when every woman wants to live in a four-bedroom house with three car garages, and they were pushing their husband who can barely afford a two-bedroom apartment to go and buy a house, to go and put their neck in mortgages. And then, so, if you do that, then you know you are the one that is pushing that. It is for your husband to be able to say no, but as you know, most of men truly love their wives and they truly want to please them, that you can almost always convince them and they will go with the wife. And now they go and put their necks in mortgage that they can't afford. And so, don't take what I'm taking to talking to you today to be that Dr. Lyman said it's 100 to 0. If you know you are somebody who forced your husband to go and buy that house when you know you cannot afford it, don't quote me on that. <laughs> because if your husband then has the option, because your husband has the option, he can then, because your husband has the option, he can then say, honey, Let's move back to our two-bedroom apartment. They don't do a lot of money. Don't do that. Because if your husband can only afford a two-bedroom, he's allowed to stay within his means. He's allowed to stay within his means. That way you can keep your money and he knows his 100% is his responsibility. But that means he has to stay within his means. So if that means vacating that four-bedroom house and three-car garages to go back to the apartment, Okay, that's fine. Alhamdulillah, you can keep your money. So you have to, we all have to exercise some wisdom. Now, when it comes to the challenges of women who are working, it's important to understand why financial responsibility is the prerogative, is the, well, for lack of a better word, the problem of the husband. For women who work, Please do not make up excuses because you work is a reason for doing X or for doing Y. 
Because remember, your husband is responsible for 100% of the economic responsibilities in the house. So, simple exercise. You are going to work, it takes you 30 minutes to get to work, you resume 8 o'clock, it's now 7.30. Your husband is at home, he's looking at you as you are dressing. <laughs> and you know that happens a lot, huh? That happens here. Yeah? So, he's looking at you dressing, and you are looking at the clock, and he's looking at you, and then he calls you, Adia, come to Papa. <laughs> so, what exactly is supposed to happen? Are you supposed to, A, hey, tell him, ah, uh ah, -uh, we did it last night now, just wait till I get back at night. Okay, at night. That's option one. Option two is to say, ah, what's wrong with you? Can't you see I'm going to work? After I make this money and I bring it home. That's option two. Option three is to call your work and say, I have an urgent family issue to I